Canal Famous Cigarettes presents The Big Story. May. Hey, May. How's about going back home? It's getting late. What's the matter with you, Harry? You're getting married tomorrow, right? <laughs> That's right, I'm getting married tomorrow. So, this is your last night of free man, right? Hey, that's good. My last night of free man. That's good, Hardy. Yeah, very good. Look, mate, shouldn't we... Just drive, Eddie, don't talk. Harry, I'm your big sister, right? Your big sister, May. And this is your last night on Earth of free man. So come on, have another drink and let's make merry. Oh, uh, May, I... Have a drink like I told you, Harry. <laughs> All right. Hey, May. May, I'm past... He's out. Out cold, but dope. All right, Eddie, now. Stop the car. I said now. Gee, May, it's kind of in cold blood. You and... spineless little fool. Give me that gun. May, he's your, he's your kid brother. That's right. I'm his big sister, ain't I? And I got to take care of him, don't I? Well, I am. May, stop! He's... Why should I stop? I like what I'm doing. The Big Story. Here is America. Its sound and its fury, its joy and its sorrow, as faithfully reported by the men and women of the great American newspapers. Belleville, Illinois, 20 miles across the Missouri border from St. Louis, a body found with five bullets in its head. From the pages of the St. Louis Globe Democrat, the terrifying story of hate between a brother and a sister. And tonight, to A.B. Hendry of the St. Louis, Missouri Globe Democrat, goes the Pell-Mell Award for the big story. <laughs> America's leading cigarette, only one is outstanding. Only one is outstanding. It's the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell. Look at a Pell Mell. It looks good. Feel a Pell Mell. It feels good. Taste a Pell Mell. It tastes good. Smoke a Pell Mell. It smokes good. Now you've discovered why so many of your friends have changed to Pell Mell, the longer, finer cigarette. For Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke on the way to your throat. That's important. Yes, Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Of all America's leading cigarettes, only one is outstanding. Only one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell Famous Cigarette. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> And now the story as it actually happened. A.B. Hendry's story as he lived it. Your name is A.B. Hendry. Abe, dear friend, reporter for the St. Louis Globe Democrat. And you think the world is a pretty good place this sunny July morning as you wheel your new convertible out of the smoke of St. Louis and drive up through the cornfields of western Illinois that border your hometown. You like things fine this morning. It's 9 a.m., you're off on a week's vacation, you got a raise and a new car, and the sun is beautiful on the Illinois field. And then, you see a farmer waving at you wildly, standing in the middle of the road, signaling you to stop. You step on the brake and look at his face. 
One word is written on it. Carol. Sharon, get your telephone and tell him. I got no phone at my place. What's the matter, mister? You look... the field there. See, about 20 yards in. It's a body. Let me look at him. Uh, there's nothing to look at, son. Just something to make you sick on. I'll just take a look, if you don't mind. You look, Abe Henry, because you're a reporter. And in the moment when you see the crushed head of a human being lying in the sunlight in a lovely cornfield in Illinois, your vacation's over. The sun seems to go out of the sky because no death, it doesn't matter that you don't know anything about the dead man, no death like that can ever be accepted. No such violence can ever be normal. So, you get the bare facts. Unidentified man found on a farm. Discovered 8 a.m. by farmer's wife. Place, Belleville, Illinois. You drive to the next farm. Place two calls. One to your paper, one to the police. And in half an hour, you and a very slight, very short, and very cynical police lieutenant named Keene are back at the scene of the crime in a blood-stained cornfield. Pretty, Annie. You say your wife found him, Pop? That's right, Lieutenant. She was going out the hen house. Yeah, I know. Why'd you have to call me on this case, Henry? Because you're the best officer I know in St. Louis. Got enough unsolved cases on my mind. Why hand me another one? Come on. Come off it. I like to watch you work, King. Okay, get out your notes. Okay, Lieutenant. Put this down. Victim tall, thin man, red hair, freckles, face and forearm. Weight 140? Weight 160. Car track through cornfield leading to place where body was thrown. Now, let's get a little closer. I wouldn't do that, Lieutenant, if I was you. Patch of poison ivy there. See? That poison ivy? Don't you know poison ivy, Lieutenant Keene? Okay, no. Murder I may have poison ivy. They always assign me to these gang cases. The gang job? What else? This poor guy was killed, taken for a ride, and dumped. Period. End of report. Since when do professional killers shoot five bullets into one man? They don't waste bullets. Hmm. What's in his pocket, Sam? I don't know. I waited for you. Well, in the pants. Coat? No. No. Wait a minute. Press pocket. Notebook. Blank. Nothing here. Blank. Wait a minute. <laughs> Two names. Harry Catlin. Harry Catlin. Agnes Emerson. Agnes Emerson. Addresses too? Yeah. That's a surprise. Now, let me see. Sure. Funny. Funny? Huh? What's funny? Yeah, it's nothing. It's a professional job. Kill job and a dumping. Crawl all the way. Except the five bullets in the notebook. Agnes Emerson doesn't sound like any mobster I ever heard of. Right, Lieutenant? Hey, Keen, right? Ah, uh, why don't you shut up? Let's go see Aggie, huh, Lieutenant? Can I come? No. I'm giving up a vacation. No. Remember, I called you, not the Illinois police. I said no. Pop, I ain't gonna catch poison ivy, am I? Keen, Henry, you find Agnes Emerson? No. Well, I did. Where? Have a look in the Globe Democrat, my paper. Cut it out. What are you talking about? Marriages. Page 29. Agnes Emerson to guess who? Catlin? Harry Catlin. When? Today, in half an hour, at St. Michael's. Thanks for the tip. Oh, no. You brushed me off in that cornfield. This time I come or I don't tell all. What else is there? That bride's going to be waiting at the church a long time. Why? Because the guy with the bullets in his head was Harry. Sure? Checked it with our pictures. Tall, skinny, redhead. Freckles? Freckles. You better come along, Henry. I'm not much good at telling girls they were stood up at the altar by dead men. See you at St. Michael's in five minutes. I'm sorry it had to be this way, Miss Emerson. <laughs> Mr. Emerson. But that's the way it is. Thank you, uh... I, thank you. Daughter, please, please. What good does it do to... We'll leave you now, Mr. Emerson. We'll stop back some other time. A couple of questions I have to ask you. Yes, Lieutenant. Aggie, darling. Come on, Henry. 
sorry. <laughs> Bye. Well, I guess that's that, Henry. Seems like a nice kid, too. So it goes on the unsolved list, Lieutenant? Not right away. We'll track down the tires in the cornfield if we can. Shoe marks. I'll give it a grade A number one treatment. But I think it's what I said. A gang dumped a boyfriend. Period. End of report. You got other ideas? A few. Look, Emerson told us Harry was a nice, quiet, steady sort of a guy. Electrical engineer, right? So? Does that sound like the kind of guy who gets mixed up with a gang? A guy like that's earning 75 maybe $100 a week. He's going to get married. What's he doing hanging around with a gang? Maybe he's a regular Jekyll and Hyde. Daytime, a steady, dependable guy. Nighttime, a real low-down Who's killer. Who's the writer, you or me? Look, Gabe, you're a good fella. Don't step over the line. I said I'd give it A1 treatment and everything. But from where I sit, it's an unsolved gang case. Seen this kind going on 20 years. Four clues and a dead end, period. Maybe Emerson did it himself. Had something to do with it. Why, Emerson? Why not Mussolini? Did you see how grief-stricken he was? Never really batted an eye. Emerson didn't like Harry Catlin. So what? Lots of fathers-in-law don't like the guys their daughters pick out. I don't say kill them. I know. I'm only asking. Couldn't it have been someone else? Not a gang after Harry? No. No? No. Well, I think it was. Why? A lot of things. Why? First, the five bullets. Hate was involved there. Somebody who hated Harry pumped five bullets into his head. And that notebook in his pocket with the names on it. And then this. The day before a wedding, a guy is killed. Why would a gang pick a day like that to kill somebody? Coincidence, man. They wouldn't. But somebody who knew Harry intimately, who was close to him, he might do it. Or she might do it. Don't get romantic. And the job he had, the kind of guy he was. He was no racketeer. Uh, I say no mob did it. I say it was a crime of passion. I say that... Okay, you said it. Now prove it. What? Prove it. I got eight unsolved robberies in town to work on. That and two other unsolved killings. I say this was a gang job, and I'll give the treatment for a gang job. You say no. Let's see you back up what you just said. Go out and prove it, Henry. Go ahead and do it. There it is, Dave Henry. The challenge is thrown to you. The thin, short, cynical, crackerjack police lieutenant named Keene has taken you on your word. Go out and prove somebody killed Harry Catlin. Go out and find who it was who pumped five bitter bullets into the head of a man in an Illinois cornfield. Go ahead. We'll be back in just a moment with tonight's big story. Of all America's leading cigarettes, only one is outstanding. Only one is outstanding. It's the longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell. Look at a Pell Mell. It looks good. Feel a Pell Mell. It feels good. Taste a Pell Mell. It tastes good. Smoke a Pell Mell. It smokes good. Now you've discovered why so many of your friends have changed to Pell Mell. No longer finer cigarettes. Pell Mell. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. For Pell Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke on the way to your throat. That's important. Yes, Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Of all America's leading cigarettes, only one is outstanding. Only one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. This is Cy Harris, returning you to your narrator and the big story of reporter A.B. Hendry as he lived it and wrote it. You watch the police lieutenant as he leaves you with a challenge and an unsolved crime on your hands. You wonder what you're going to do. Because you, A.B. Hendry, reporter for the St. Louis Globe Democrat, have said you don't think a gang killed Harry Chaplin. You said you think someone close to him did it, that it was a crime of passion. Okay, now prove it. That's your assignment. Lieutenant Keene gave it to you, and your city editor, when you told him, he gave it to you, too. 
Sure, Abe, he said. You'll find the murderer. Good story there. And now, you're at it. Well, where do you start? You try at the Emerson house. Agnes Emerson, the girl, left at the church because a man was killed. And Agnes Emerson's father. You start with them, and you go slow because... Because that's the situation. I know this is not the best time, the day after Harry's been found. But is there anything you can tell me that would help us find who did it? I told you all I know. 